Hello, today we're going to talk about non-concurrent forces and we're going to work out the, what a non-concurrent force is and how it operates in a 2D system. To do that, we're going to look at some of the definitions that we're going to be working with. The first one is a vector. A vector is simply a force with a direction. So it's a force that acts in a certain direction, upwards to the side at an angle. The second thing we're going to be looking at is the resolution of forces. Now imagine a force acting at an angle. Any force acting at an angle can be resolved into a vertical component and a horizontal component. If you imagine me being pulled by my arm that's vertical and my arm that's horizontal here, if there was an equal force on both arms, I would be pulled at 45 degrees this way. If there was a, a bigger force pulling me upwards than this horizontal force, I would tend to go closer to the vertical. So any force can be represented by two components, its vertical component and its horizontal component. We need to define the difference between concurrent forces and non-concurrent forces. The simplest way of doing that is to imagine Imagine that I'm going to punch here, and that's, that's a force. And I meet that force with another force here that's directly equal and opposite. Then I have concurrent forces because they're both acting through the same point here. If I had yet another force acting down here through the same point, I would have three concurrent forces. In this force system, if this arm is pushing harder than this arm, I'm going to get movement. So, in a balanced system, the forces must be equal and opposite. Non-concurrent forces, once again, using my punch analogy, this time we have one force moving here and one force moving underneath, one force moving on top and one force moving underneath. They're not meeting at a single point. Therefore, we get a turning force or a moment. So, concurrent forces meet at a single point Non-concurrent forces don't, and non-concurrent forces produce something called a moment. We're going to be using two basic equations from trigonometry. The first one, here looking here, we can see that as long as we know the, the force, the cosine times that force, cosine of the angle times that force, will give us, in this case, the horizontal component, or if we use this angle, the vertical component. When we've resolved all the forces in the system, the resultant force will usually form some type of angle, and that angle will be formed of the overall horizontal forces and the overall vertical forces. We can use the relationship, the tangent of the opposite of the angle over the adjacent to find that angle. So those are the only two bits of trick that we're going to use in, in doing this non-concurrent forces problem. Here we have our problem. We have a force system, we have a block here, and we have four forces, one for each corner of the block. And the way that I work this out is I resolve the forces for each corner and I write them in a little bubble here and then I can work out the resultant and the angle. I can find the total moment of the force and I can find its perpendicular distance from A, this being point A here. So starting with the top corner we have a 7 kilonewton force in the top corner here and it's acting at 45 degrees to that corner. So remember our trigonometry, we said, we said that we're going to take the cosine of that angle, 45 degrees, so cos 45, and we're going to multiply it by the force, so it's times 7, and we have 4.94 kilonewtons acting horizontally, and we also have 4.94 kilonewtons acting vertically there, so we can write that in. And we can put the arrows in as well, like so. And that, that just tells us which way the forces are acting.
In this corner we have six kilonewtons and that is of course acting in this direction here. But we also note that the six kilonewtons produces a moment about A. So it's acting three meters from A. A is here. This part of the block is two meters. This part of the block is three meters. You need this information, by the way. And it's acting three meters from A in this direction. So we have a moment, and it's a clockwise moment, so it's positive, of six times three is equal to 18. There. In this bottom corner we have a 20 degree angle and that will produce two forces. One will be a horizontal force acting in this direction and the other one will be a vertical force acting in this direction here. So I can quickly put those in. The horizontal force, 4.69 newtons, is acting in this direction but because it acts through A there is no moment created by that force because it's acting through A. There is also a downwards horizontal force of 1.71 kilonewtons that's acting down and that produces a moment of 1.71 times 2. It's acting 2 meters away from A. It's acting in this direction so that produces a moment. produces a force of 3.42 kilonewtons and this moment is clockwise which by convention is positive. We must also note that at the top here we have a moment acting against these two clockwise moments which is once again 3 meters from A and it's 3 times 4.94 so we can write that in here. Fourteen point eight two. And finally, we have a force acting directly through A, which will be acting downwards, four kilonewtons acting downwards here, but that force will produce no moment. So we have forces that we can resolve into a resultant and we can find the angle of that resultant and we have moments here of minus 14.82 plus 18 and plus 3.42. Firstly we're going to find the sum of horizontal forces and we count them up we have a negative plus plus and when we add those together we get a total horizontal moment of 5.75 kilonewtons acting in this direction we do the same for the vertical forces forces acting up 4.94 minus 1.71 that's this one here and also minus 4 and when we do that sum we have a total vertical force of 0 0.77 kilonewtons and that is acting downwards there so effectively we have two forces one acting in this direction here, that's the horizontal force and the vertical force is acting downwards so the resultant will act downwards and to the right that will be the result, resultant force produced by all the forces in this system and it will produce an angle to the horizontal at this point and we can, we can find that, that angle by using this side as the opposite this side as the adjacent and we take the tangent of that ratio of the opposite 
over the adjacent. We're going to do that sum now. When you do that sum, you will get 0.77 divided by 5.75. And you're going to use the arctan function, tan minus 1, equals 0 0.1. Three, three, nine. So you press shift on your calculator, ten point one three three nine, and that will give you an angle of seven point six two degrees. So the angle is seven point six two degrees, and the resultant this point can be found through Pythagoras. We will take the square root of 5.75 squared plus 0.77 squared. And that will give you a total resultant force of 5.8 kilonewtons. So the angle is at 7.62 degrees to the horizontal and the total resultant force is 5.8 kilonewtons. That's two of the things worked out. We also know that this force acts downwards and to the right here. But what we will also want to know, if I come back to our original drawing, we want to know the moment of that force. So the moment, in relation to point A, always acts at 90 degrees to point A, here. The first thing we need to do in order to do that is to find the total moment in the system. And we, we said before that we have two positive moments of 18 and 3.42. So when you multiply those two, when you add those together, you get 21.42 and a negative moment of 14.68. I beg your pardon, 14.82. Therefore, the total moment in the system will be 21.42 minus 14.82 is 6.6 .6 kilonewtons. That's the total moment in the system. This moment is acting in a clockwise direction. It's positive. Now to find the perpendicular distance from A, that's this distance here, we have to look at the resultant. We have a resultant there, which will produce a moment times that resultant. So the total moments in the system, 6.6 .6 kilonewtons, is equal to the resultant force this force acting at this direction times its perpendicular distance from A, this bit here. Perpendicular distance from A. We know the total moments are 6.6 .6 kilonewtons. And we also know the resultant is 5.8. But we don't know A. So to find A, we simply take the 5.8 over to the other side. So we get 6.6 .6 divided by 5.8. And when you do that sum in your calculator, you'll see that the perpendicular distance from here to point A in our diagram is equal to 1.13 metres. And that's how you do non-concurrent forces in 2D systems. So that's basically how you work out non-concurrent forces in 2D systems. I've got my own way of doing it. I put the little bubbles in each corner, or for each force point, and work them out like that. Other people use tables. Any way you want to do it is fine, as long as you have some type of logical system to follow. Hope that helped you to understand how to work them out a little bit better. And uh, I'm always open for any questions if you've got them. Bye.